Uh -huh. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee. So the Most High says righteousness. The scriptures are saying that the righteousness belongs to the Most High. When you look at Deuteronomy 6 and 25, go there right quick to see what righteousness is. When you understand what righteousness, you know, really means according to the scriptures, we'll get it out the scriptures. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse 25. So everybody might have their own notion, their own, you know, idea of what righteousness is. But let's see what the word says. And it shall be our righteousness uh -huh. if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. So you gotta you gotta listen to the key words that says, it shall be our, the nation of Israel's righteousness. And what? If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. So it's like I'm saying all these commandments, all these laws, all these statutes. If we were to elect a ruler, somebody to be above us, something, some, somebody who, you know, to guide us, it was supposed to be from our people. An abiding citizen of what law? The law of the Most High. Not the law of the governor, you know, of whatever territory, whatever territory we were in. So that's why you got to understand this is our righteousness. So, so go back to uh, Daniel. Our righteousness is to keep the law and abide in them and do them and teach them to our people. Continue. Daniel chapter 9, verse 7. Uh -huh. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee. Well, how about to Israel? But unto us, confusion of faces. Confusion of faces. Unfortunately, and you can read that in the scriptures, one of the curses was going to be that we were going to forget who we are or who we were. That's why we don't have that spirit no more. That revolutionary spirit, it's not in our people anymore. We can't even go back a couple hundred years to see what Mexico was about. You can't even go back to slavery to really see what slavery was about. And the groups of people that were battling and always going against the system. That were always rebelling against the system. Why? What belongeth to us? But unto us, confusion of faces. Confusion of faces. Creole. Mix. They call us mixed breeds, right? There's no such thing as a mixed breed when you read the scriptures. The man, the father carries the sperm, the seed. You are what your father is. That's right. And that's the only thing that you will ever be. So whatever your offspring is, that's what you know, it's whatever you were, whatever your father was. And you go all the way back and you link up to one of the 18 nations that God created. Like we said before, well, us right here, we link back to the seed of Abraham that, you know, begat Isaac, that begat Jacob. I doubt that, brother. I doubt that. You go back to Esau. You go back to Abraham, and you go back to Isaac, but you're of Esau. Genesis 25, verse 25. So going back, it says, but to us belongeth confusion of faces. Because when you see these so-called Jewish right here, which we probably going to have up in a minute, they're going to tell you they, they know where they come from. They know their origin. They know how they've traveled throughout the earth and where they, you know, basically, you know, recited throughout the years. Our people don't have that understanding. Our people, the Native Americans, they don't even accept the Bible because they look at it, that's a white man's book. The so-called black revolutionary-minded individual, the same thing. Why? Because Esau, the so-called white man, took themselves and set themselves as lords and as gods. And therefore, we look at it all through our history. They trip on us when we talk about Yahweh being racist. That means the Most High being racist. But what about the Nazis? What about white supremacy? How come nobody have, has issues when that pops up? And what are the Nazis about? What, what are the white supremacists about? There are people. So what's wrong with that? Why can't we be about our people? What's the difference? I'll tell you the difference. We'll show you the difference in the scriptures. Because once our people wake up, guess what? Ain't no other supremacy. When our people are in full power, abiding by the laws, everybody submits to Israel. So go ahead, read that, finish that up. So it says, to us belongeth confusion of faces. We call ourselves Mexicans, Central, South, Caribbeans. You know, we call ourselves a color. We call ourselves two continents. We call ourselves everything but what we truly are. So that's what the Most High said the Scripture said. Unto the Most High belongeth righteousness. Unto us belongeth confusion of faces. You see, everybody else knows where they come from. Except for the so-called black and Latino man. So let's get Hosea 4 and 6 to get that out the scriptures. All right. 
So again, for those that just arrived and might be curious, we are Hebrew Israelites showing our people what it is that the Most High desires and requires from us to be considered, you know, those righteous individuals that he, uh, that he uh, selected for his people. Go ahead, read that. Hosea chapter four, verse six. Uh -huh. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So you got a clear understanding of who his people are, right? So-called black, so-called Latinos in a sense, my people are what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. Our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You know, that's why when you, you tell a, a black man or a Latino man, you know you're the true Jew of the Bible, they look at you like, you're crazy. No, I'm not. You see those guys with the little sitsis, the tassels, and the little yarmulke on their head? Those are the Jews. No, they're not. Go back in their history. Ask them about their history. Ask them when they got to Jerusalem. Ask them when they were given that land of Israel. And then go go farther back than the 40s. So how the hell are they going to be the chosen people of the Most High? How are they going to be the chosen people when they're ruling the earth? And in Job 9, it tells you that the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. It's so simple, but again, my people are what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh -huh. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Imagine that. The Most High said, you rejected his knowledge. The law, the statutes, the commandments. We stopped following the government that he gave us. So there, therefore he said, you know, since you have rejected my understanding, my wisdom, my knowledge, he will also what? Reject thee. Also reject us and who else? That thou shalt be no priest to me. Uh -huh. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Imagine that. He says, I'm not only going to forget you, but you're going to forget the word. Therefore, you're not going to be able to serve as priests. The priests were the ones that conveyed the law to our people. So without anybody giving us the law, how are we going to continue in the law? No possible way. Therefore, at the end of the day, he says, I will also forget thy children. When you look at all our history, our people started following all these different nations. All the other 17 nations, you know, we took a little bit from each one of them and ended up in the idolatry that we in nowadays. All this religion that you guys follow is nothing but idolatry. The scriptures tell you that that is nothing but, you know, an abominable aspect of whatever your lifestyle is. So right now it's telling you, since you forgot my people, since you forgot my laws, I will also forget thee. So let's go to Leviticus. Go to Leviticus, I mean, uh, Exodus 4 and 10. To see the duty of the priests. To see what was the whole point of having priests. You go to church, right? Who gives you that bogus, that nonsense, all them lies? Who teaches you that? It's an individual. Well, the Most High set particular individuals to do so. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 4, verse 10. Yeah. And Moses said unto the Lord, uh -huh. O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow speech, and of a slow tongue. I get, get to, uh, to verse 9 and 10. I mean to uh, 16. 15, 16. Exodus chapter 15. Yeah. No, the same, same, same chapter. Verse 15. Exodus within that same chapter, verse 15. And I shall speak unto him and put words in his mouth. So who was going to put words in the mouth of Moses was the Most High. Go ahead. And I will be with thy mouth uh -huh. and with his mouth. So the mouth of Moses and Aaron. For all those people that say that this is a, you know, a book written by man. Of course, what book hasn't been, you know, laid out and written by men? But it was inspired by the Most High. Because he's telling you right now, he's telling Moses that his mouth and Aaron's mouth were going to speak his words that he was going to put in, his, in, the, in their spirit. Go ahead. And will teach you what you shall do. Uh-huh. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be. Even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. Exactly. So that's what it is. When you see us out here, the, you know, we out here because it's necessary for our people to hear this word. You go to church, you go to any place where the Bible is being taught, they ain't going to teach you the law. They ain't going to teach you where our people, you know, are going off and following other things other than the word of the most, word of the most high. So go from there, go to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 and 1, so you guys can understand the whole point of why we out here. Anybody has any questions, any comments, feel free to come up. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Uh-huh. For I allow, spare not. 
lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Again, it says, show my people their transgression. For example, you got Jake's out here. You know, you got people out here buying on the Holy Sabbath. That is against the scriptures. You find that in Exodus 20 and verse 8. That's one of the uh, Ten Commandments. You know, you can't be buying, you can't be selling, you can't be cooking. Anything that's your will, you're not to do on this day. But you see everybody, everybody doing whatever they please. That's against the scriptures. So people might say, you know what, it is what it is. Well, at the end of the day, the Most High also tells you what it is if you don't follow these laws. Go ahead, finish that up. In the house of Jacob, there's sin. Uh-huh. Go, uh, go to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1, we're going to go through the curses right quick to see what it is that our people are going through so you'll be able to recognize, you know, and identify who these people are, who the so-called Latinos really are, who the so-called black people, you know, really are according to the scriptures. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day uh -huh. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So again, all those people that got, you know, issues with, you know, the Israelites sound like some, you know, some type of racist group. We're just coming out the scriptures. Again, the Most High said, you know, to be above, to set apart, you know, if you were to follow all these commandments, do them and teach them to your kids, guess what? We would be at the top. We would be ruling. It wouldn't be America. But obviously, we went and did the opposite of that. Therefore, we at the bottom. We at the bottom of the totem pole. We out here like servants instead of, you know, rulers having servants. We out here, you know, working for pennies, working for crumbs instead of, you know, giving others, you know, some type of payment for whatever services they provide for us. But see, our people love that though. Unfortunately, our people love that because you look at the history. You look at our history. You look at, you know, Cherubim. Instead of following abiding by the laws, which was one of the first kings of the northern kingdom, he went and set up idols. He set up idols, preventing the people to do what they had to do. The same thing as nowadays. Instead of coming through and bringing our people and teaching them these laws and these statues, you'd rather have people go ahead and take you to church. A lot of people gonna be at church tomorrow. Instead of being out here learning and uh, you know adhering to the words of the Most High. Instead of being at home, opening your own Bible and really seeing what this Bible is about. Why? We already read it. Our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Instead of you know stopping by and asking questions, what's your brothers about? What are you brothers teaching? You know, people rather go in and get in line for some nonsense, some worldly, vain nonsense. But that's the character of our people. So go from there. Go to uh. So he says, if you follow and abide by the laws, we were gonna be set above. Now what happens if we do the opposite? Go to 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh -huh. verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So there you go, it says, but if you so-called black man, Latino man, if you don't abide to the laws that are stated, that are written in this Bible here, what's gonna happen? All these what? All these curses shall come upon me and overtake me. All right, so let's run through a couple right quick. Let's go, let's go down the list and see what type of curses we in. First, go to uh, verse 64. Because remember, we used to be in the land of Israel. The land of Israel was given to our forefathers. But where we at now? In America, where we at now? Throughout the four corners of the earth. And what type of condition? In a lost condition. Every other individual, you know where they came from. They know where they came from. Our people, we don't know none of that. We only go back a generation, if that. Which is one, well, you know, one of the curses that you read in verse 64. Go ahead and read 64. Verse 64. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So you see that? The Most High was going to scatter us. When you scatter something is when you come through, grab a little bit of sand and toss it. You know, you're going to see it all over the place. So that means we are all over. The word is saved. Not us. We are saved. We are saved. You are the so-called 
You know, the so-called white man is an Edomite according to the scriptures. And you got death coming to you. Thus said the Lord in the book of Obadiah and from Genesis to Revelations. That is what the Most High is saying. Young man, all right? You can look, uh, look us up, truenation.org for more information. I know a lot of people don't like to come, you know, face to face, but you could do that. We got that avenue nowadays. So the Most High is saying, if you didn't follow his laws, guess what? We were going to be scattered amongst the Africans, amongst the Asian men, amongst the so-called Arabian people, among every individual on the face of the earth. That's why we go back nowadays and we consider ourselves all these titles except who we truly are. Go ahead, finish that up. From the one end of the earth, uh -huh. even unto the other. Exactly. Go ahead now. Let's get uh, some of the other curses. Let's go and get... Uh, let's go to 32. Read verse 32. Another thing was, remember, we were to be teaching our people, our kids, you know, the law, the statutes. The Bible don't only consists, you know, of the religious aspect, how you guys know it out there. You got science, you got math, you got, you know, everything that you could use that you might need in life to be productive, agriculture, you know, all of these aspects are in the Bible. So therefore, our people were to be the instructors, meaning the teachers, to our fellow children, you know, so they could raise up and be productive individuals. Go ahead, read that. Verse 32. But this is what happened. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Imagine that. You look at that. You look at the, you know, at the beginning of this country right here. The so-called native people, they got thrown, you know, in school systems where they deprived them from all their culture, switched them up, and made them look like European people, like Europeans. What are they doing nowadays? Instead of teaching us our law, our statutes, they put us in the LAUSD system, they infect us with all this crap that they shoot up in our system, and then teach us nothing but lies. How is that? That's what the scripture said that was gonna happen to our people. Go ahead, read that from the top again. Thy sons and thy daughters uh -huh. shall be given unto another people, uh -huh. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. You know, can you can you prevent your son from going to the school system? What happens if you don't send your kid to the schools, to the school yeah. system, I You go to jail, right? So that's why it says, and your eyes will be viewing these kids getting tossed in these, you know, homosexual, you know, institutes. Where these institutes where they teach you nothing but, you know, to transgress the law of the Most High. And what was gonna be enough, would we, would we have power to prevent that from happening? Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. But there will be no might in our hand. And that's what's been happening for how many years? That's why you ask anybody. A lot of our black men don't even know about slavery. A lot of our Latino people don't know about the conquista, which is also documented in the scriptures. Read 49 right quick. Verse 49. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. All right. A so it says, brother, do you know what happened in the, in the late 1500s? I mean, in the late 1400s to the so-called Mexican man? You don't know about the conquista? See, that's what I'm saying. Our people don't get taught that. That's why that revolutionary spirit is not in our people. Uh -huh. You know, when, when the conquista, where you have it? You have it right here. You, you heard about Cortes, Hernan Cortes, Columbus, Pizarro. But that's what I'm saying. The origin goes back to Mexico. Don't be ashamed of your people, brother. You are so-called, you know, according to the scriptures, you are a chosen, a chosen seed of the Most High. So when I go, go going back into the scriptures, he just read, read that from the top again. Verse 49. Uh-huh. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee. So the Most High is saying, if you don't abide by these laws that are in the Bible, not religion, but the laws, the statutes, that the Most High was going to bring a what? Bring a nation against thee. Uh-huh. Pick that up, bud. From right. far. So when you look at the late 1400s, right, the Spaniards arrived on the coast of Mexico, South and Central America, as well as the Caribbean. You got Columbus, they came up in here. A nation from the other side of the earth. And what were they gonna do to our people? From the end of the earth, uh -huh. as swift as the eagle flies. When you look at the eagle, what's the emblem of America? Eagle. The eagle, right? What's the emblem of, you know, you go back to Babylon, you go to uh, your, uh, Rome, what's been the emblem of these nations? Eagle. Always been an eagle. Pull out a dollar, look, look at, you know, behind a dollar, you gonna see an eagle. Even Mexico, they placed an eagle in Mexico. So it says, as swift as the eagle flying. These are little uh, details that, may, that you know, they're gonna let you understand and pinpoint who this nation is. Go ahead. 
a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. When you look at our history, our people were not speaking Spanish. Our people were not speaking French or Portuguese or Italian. Any of those languages our people were not speaking. We spoke different dialects of Hebrew. And there's vast documentation, you know, laid out that you could go and search out and you will find the proof of that. So it says, a name, go ahead, read that again. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Uh -huh, go ahead. A nation of fierce continent. Raise that up again, huh? Look at the faces of these individuals. Do they look like some people you could trust? Do they look like some people that are going to come and comfort you? You look at them, look at their faces, look at their countenance. What does it say about the countenance? A nation of fierce countenance. Of fierce countenance. When they came in, you can read the books. They came in and they massacred our people. They killed millions within months. What kind of people are those? But then they called us savages. They said we were the savages. When you look at that, their own people, their own, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the people that kept documents, you know, that kept the, the books, the scribes. They, you know, lay them out and show you the true colors. They were even amazed by the wickedness that their own people were doing. Go ahead, continue with the scriptures. Which shall not regard the person of the old, uh -huh. nor show favor to the young. So you see, uh, these individuals, they didn't favor anybody. When you look at these pictures right here. This is off of a book called Bartolo, you know, the author is Bartolome de las Casas, The Devastation of the Indies. They used to hang us by 12. Line us up and light us up. If your mom was pregnant, they would come through and have games where they would swing and try to see who would cut the female and the fetus with one strike. All that is documented in the scripture that was going to happen to our people for transgressing the law. Go ahead, finish that up. Nor show favor to the young. Uh huh. That's all. So you see, going back to uh, why this is important, because a lot of people look at, yeah, why, why are you guys yelling out there? What are you guys talking about? In love and memory, like your shirt states, in love and memory of our people, are you know we got we got so many legends in our culture, but we don't know about them. Imagine, I just asked you about a couple people that go back just a couple hundred years ago, you know? And our people don't know that. Why? Because the school systems all across the four corners of the earth are not teaching us our heritage. You know, we've been discontinued from our heritage. That's why we out here teaching our people who we truly are, what our mission is, you know, and what it is that we got to do. You know, once we know that we Hebrew Israelites, what's the next step? Repentance. Then after that, then you got to start living a different lifestyle. You know, do you have any questions by the chance? You good? Uh, I'm gonna let that, you know, let the next brother go up. And, uh, you know, any questions, feel free to come up. Yeah. All right?